Okay, so on today's edition of Trash Panned Off-Road, we're gonna do the clutch on my Suzuki X90. You can hear that noise. Let me see if I can make it. It goes away when you put the clutch in. That's part of the reason we're changing it. The other part is, sometimes the clutch just doesn't work. It doesn't engage. I checked underneath in the pedal assembly that you're supposed to verify everything looked good under there, but sometimes it just won't let you grab a gear. And right now is not one of those times. Usually happens when it's cold, like in the morning when I head to work or whatever. Um, but the other day, I couldn't get it into gear. I had to come home all the way from AutoZone in like second gear, so. Not AutoZone, O'Reilly's. I don't go to AutoZone, I go to O'Reilly's. Anyways, so that noise has been doing it for about a year. And my understanding is it might be a pilot bushing or I'm sorry, the the other bushing that's in there, throw out bearing. So I'm just gonna change it now that it works just fine, of course, for camera. But we're gonna do it anyway. There is already a clutch changing type video on the channel when we did the clutch in my buddy Austin from Track Kick Off Road. Uh, he has a Geo Tracker. Or, uh, it's just a side. Well, no, it's it's a tracker now, but back then it was a uh, Sidekick, um, and we did the clutch. But it's not a very good video in terms of helping guys out, and really doesn't give anybody a good idea as to what you're in for. So. Here's where we're going to start. You take out the cup holder, take out the center console, take out that shifter, which should be a push and a twist, pulls that rod out. Not 100% sure on how to get that rod out right now off the top of my head. I got to look back and remember. Um, but that's how you pop all that stuff off of there. And then that'll be done interior wise. Then we'll unhook the battery and take the starter out. And we'll do all that stuff before we start to go underneath. That took way longer than it should have. Got all the center parts out. Not a big deal. I think you can leave the transfer case stick. But you have to pop out the actual 5-speed stick. So, then we got the starter out. Which, anybody, any of you guys know, have had to take a starter out of one of these rigs. Especially the 16-valve. There is no room in there, and the guy who invented how to hold the starter in needs a swift kick in the nuts. Way too long to get that all taken apart. They keep this brace here on the uh, manifold to the block. I disregard that brace on every one of them. All four, four trackers, five tr trackers that I own um, in the X90s, I don't run that brace. It may be a mistake, but I do not run that brace. It is in the way. It is a pain in the ass. Now that I have it out, once I got it out, starter, well, still was a pain in the ass. But anyways, starter's out. Center console stuff's all out. Now we're going to unhook the front drive lines and the rear drive line. One drive line. Unhook the drive lines. In case you guys forgot, I'm not a mechanic. I pulled the front drive line and... All of the fluid came out of the transfer case all over the ground. So, <clears throat> we may be done for the night. See that mess? Hold on, stupid light. Uh, there you go. See that mess? That's not good. That's all the fluid out of the transfer case, which I was gonna change anyway, but I don't know, I wasn't thinking. And it squirted right out. When I pull the front drive line out. So now I gotta clean that mess up before I can get back under there. While we wait for that to drain, you guys wanna see a secret? I got this rig in Port Angeles, which is basically in Washington, almost to the Canadian border. It's kinda coastal, so, you know, there's a lot of rust and stuff like that on this rig. But check this out. <clears throat> That's underneath the driver floorboard yeah so um, that's on the list of things that need to be fixed
I did know about that when I bought it, by the way. It's not something that I just now found. I just uh, never showed anybody. Got my mess cleaned up. Piece of cardboard under there. And so now what I'm going to do is unhook the four bolts that keep the engine and the transmission attached. And then I'm sure there's a couple of things here that I have to unhook. Um, can't think of what that is right now. But I'm sure as I get in there, I'll find them. I got one of the nuts off of the transfer case, transmission, sorry, transmission to motor. Um, and I'm calling it. I'm just not feeling it today. Uh, every little thing that's going wrong is frustrating me. I'm not enjoying myself. I'm not having a good time. Um, those of you that are fans of the channel and already know, I have a bunch of these. And I don't mind working on them that's kind of what i like to do that's why i have six or seven geo trackers suzuki sidekicks samurais x90s um but today isn't the day i'm just not feeling it i'm just gonna be done i'm gonna go in the house have a tasty adult beverage uh, find some fights on tv and i will hit this first thing in the morning i know some of you guys hopefully i'm not the only one that just gets a block and they're not enjoying themselves and not having fun and I'm I'm just not feeling it right now so I will get back to this in the morning if you're new to the channel um, oh, sorry if you're new to the channel uh, and you're just watching this video to learn how to do it I apologize to you guys um, stick with it we'll get back to it first thing in the morning it's only gonna be a quick second for you guys so it'll still be there morning everybody so a couple of quick things We've got fired back up again, taking out a couple of these bolts that do the transmission to the uh, engine. They are way easier when you're pulling an engine because you already moved all this stuff out of the way. There's a lot of junk in the way. Um, the two nuts I got from the bottom, this bolt here is not that hard because there's not a lot of junk in the way. It's actually just right down there, right in there, there's a bolt. So those were pretty easy. Um, this one here where the starter is and the manifold and all this stuff, it's in there. I can feel it. Still got to figure out what tools best to try to get in there. The, uh, water lines are in the way. That's the main thing. And then of course the big wire loom that comes up, um, and runs everything onto this side, but we'll get in there and figure it out. Also what I did while I was down below, and I'm not even a hundred percent sure this is right, but this is the direction I did it in. is the bracket that holds your clutch cable I undid the clutch cable and then there's a bracket that goes right here that connects I right here sorry that connects the transmission and it hooks onto the motor as well so I undid these two bolts out of here I would like to not take the exhaust off if I can avoid it but in order to do that, I got to get that cross member out of there. And unfortunately, this cross member is all screwed because you see right there that I can't get to that. It's supposed to be way out here. Um, there's a video on the channel of us taking this rig to Jarbridge, Nevada and wheeling it, even when it was on like 205 street tires. And because of that, this cross member is mangled. So I'm going to hit it with a hammer see if I can straighten it out a little bit because if I take this cross member out and then lower the transmission down I should be able to do it without moving the exhaust now that I have that beat up cross member out of the way I decided I was going to change the fluid in the transmission as well oops jack stand uh, probably should be sitting on that I'm not sure what happened lower that jack down a little bit so I wanted to change the transmission fluid you have to use a uh, yellow metal safe fluid you can't just put gear oil in these transmissions you can in the transfer case not in the transmission anyways so first thing always remember that hole up there always check your fill hole before your drain hole because you got to make sure you can open it up and fill it then you can crack your drain hole, which this one is being a butt, and I'm not sure why yet. Also, 
These are not quarter inch drives. It is a special 10 millimeter socket square head thing that goes in there. So don't try to put your quarter inch drive in there. That'll strip them out. This one's being difficult, so I might have to apply some heat to it to crack it. As soon as that's done dripping there, we will take the transmission jack, slide it in there, jack it up, push it back a little, lower it down. Um, I know that I still have to do the speedo cable for sure, and there might be a connection somewhere. I know there, actually I know there's an electronic connection somewhere that has to be undone. Uh, for a four wheel drive indicator. So let that drip for a few more minutes and then we will hook that thing up. My main issue with transmission jacks is you can't, well you can, but I'm not able to get the car up high enough so as that I can still put the transmission and scoot it out on the jack. So usually what I have to do is bring the transmission jack in, lift it up, use it to pull the transmission down, then knock the transmission off the jack and slide it out. Ran into something i never seen before, so I figured I'd tell you guys about it. Right there. Here is, up here, is the bolt that holds the transmission to the motor. And then below it, there's a brace. Right there with a the bolt, and right there with a the bolt. That also bolt to the transmission. Never seen that brace before on any of the other rigs. But, this is my first X90. And this is actually, I think, my first 96 and newer. Everything else I run is older. The electrical connection that I was talking about is right up above the starter. I don't know if you could see it in there or not. Let's see if I can get my finger to it. It is, oops, right there. Right here. That electrical connection is the one you need to unhook. It's up above the starter behind it. You might be able to reach it from below or above. It's one of the really stupid ones you got to kind of pry open with a screwdriver right there. Transmission's out. I already pulled off the uh, throw out bearing. So, making some noise. So, I don't know if it's good or not, but I always buy this kit. So, I always get my stuff from O'Reilly's. This is the power torque kit. It comes with pilot bushing, plate, shield, tool, and the other bushing is over here on my thing. Um, you know, you could buy more expensive ones or cheaper ones on the Amazon or whatever. For me, the fact that I can take this back to O'Reilly's, because once you buy it, once you buy a lifetime guaranteed one, and which I've done, I've taken clutches back, taken starters back, I've taken alternators back. Um, for me, it just makes sense to buy my stuff from O'Reilly's. So it looks like it might not have been a clutch issue after all. It's hard to tell. I'm assuming that it was broken already. And that's why I was having trouble shifting. But I could have broke it on the way out. Who knows? But the thing is, it's broken now. This spring right there. This spring is supposed to go over and hook down right there and it does not it's supposed to come and hook under this lip but it's broken off the end is broken off which means this thing never comes back the good thing about having a lot of these is there's always parts lying around and show you what I'm talking about is this spring right here it has that little hook in it that grabs and on the one that's in the shop, that is broken off right there. Thus, the fork does not bounce back. So I'm gonna have to take this one apart to get that spring and then switch it out. And then if I ever go decide to use this transmission, it needs a spring. Now that I got both springs out, you can see what I was talking about. This is the good one with a tail. This is the one that was in that transmission without a tail. I'm gonna say that was already broken and that was my shift issue, but I'm gonna do the clutch anyway because I already got the damn thing out. Springs replaced, throw out bearings replaced, pressure plate. This is the bad one. Doesn't seem to be in terrible shape. This is the clutch. 
it's got some scarring big time right here um, doesn't look terrible other than that on this side the springs are chewed up so they've been getting banged on pretty good um, that's about it but I would assume it's not quite terrible but we're gonna replace it anyway this thing here looks a little beat up so we have the stuff we're just gonna replace it we already got it tore apart um, the other thing that's still in there is the pilot bushing which should be in here somewhere Aha. pilot bushing which I always just use a slide hammer to get mine out. I know there's all people talk about jamming bread in there and stuff like that. I always just put a little hook on a slide hammer, pull that out, put the new one in, call it a day. So in case anybody cares to put the pilot brushing back in, just use a bolt uh, and a couple of washers. Tap that in lightly with a hammer. It bottoms out so you can't go too far. Now we'll take the... Uh, installation tool don't throw these out because you never know when you have to make an adjustment or tear this thing apart for some reason and you're gonna wish you had one of these trust me <laughs> if anybody knows the secret to getting transmissions to line back up post it in the comments uh, I'd appreciate that I really seriously debated pulling the motor to do this job that's how much I suck when it comes to putting transmissions back together. I am right now two hours in, and I still haven't got this thing to line up. But I do have it on the jack, and we're going to try again. But if you guys know the secret, something that I'm doing wrong, or an easier way to do this, by all means, please let me know. I should have just pulled the motor. After shooting that section there about having difficulties, I took a break, reassessed, came back, and was able to get that thing to line right up. So, transmission is back in. Got the four bolts back in that hold it in place. All I got to do now is put the uh, cross member back in, hook up the... Uh, adjustment cable, the clutch cable, and put the starter in, and then fill the fluids back up. So, pretty much, uh, that's about it, really. Everything else is just done in reverse from what I already did. So, going to go ahead and end the video. Hopefully, this helps somebody out when they're trying to mess with this kind of thing. Consider subscribing to the channel. Over 150 Geo Tracker, Suzuki Sidekick, uh, X90 videos. Hopefully, we'll get to working on that Diesel Samurai soon. But the Overland Geo Tracker still needs uh, a head gasket, perhaps. Not 100% sure. So, subscribe to the channel. Of course, follow along on Instagram, Trash Panda Off Road. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope this helps.